Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and this is episode number 15 of my series entitled This and That. So make sure you watch the others in this series. And in this series, I just cover uh, various things that don't fit into other categories. And here we go. Mike Campbell out of Kentucky sent me this carbide lantern. It's like a miner's lamp, and uh, it's probably not in usable condition, and I'm going to cover that more in another video. I'm just going to mention it now because I did talk about carbide, uh, calcium carbide, in one of the videos, and uh, I, I want to show how what it is, how it's used in these lamps, and I have some other lamps that I'm going to show you that I know will work, but this one has... Uh, is just a little bit over the hill but uh, thank you Mike and this is the exact kind I had when we were kids and we used to explore the old limestone mines near Utica Illinois and these use calcium carbide Nick out of Ohio sent me a bunch of indicators and those were shown to you in one of the other uh, videos and he sent me yet more of them and on this one I'm going to talk about in another video, so I'm not going to mention it. And I have uh, talked about the profilometer, and that's going to be in another video. And this is a nice little metric federal one that he sent me. So thank you, Nick, very much for your thoughtfulness and generosity. And I think other viewers will enjoy some of these items as well. Some of you may have watched a recent video where I talked about all of the different South Bend lathe books and atlas books and just a slight continuation on that and uh, these books were sent to me by uh, Gary Cooper and he's not the cowboy star but he's from England and he sent me this wonderful book and I knew nothing about it and thank you Gary it's very similar to the South Bend how to run a lathe book but it's for the Boxford lathe and they are sold uh, in England and I think they're fairly common in Canada too but this is very similar to uh, how to run a lathe but using the Boxford lathe. They got all kinds of pictures in there regarding uh, uh, tools and grinding and uh, and it's a nice addition to my library and along with it he sent me this book here from 1949 on mechanics. You know the the British people the guys from UK are just wonderful model makers and uh, this is the kind of journals and magazines that uh, were read over there in uh, the UK so I thought you might find that of interest I certainly did and I don't know if I mentioned this in another video I may have and I forgot I lost the name of who sent this to me but Sheldon lays are lays that I had at the high school and they were made in Chicago and they were really great lays but this is an old parts list for the uh, the 10 inch. I had uh, 11 inch ones at the school, a little bit more modern than this, but I remember the exact format of uh, of these parts lists because I had those in the file cabinet at, at school many years ago. And one other thing here, a most popular video that I had uh, under my uh, How It Works series I can't believe how many people enjoyed this on the coaster brake. So if you haven't seen this cutaway of a coaster brake from a bicycle, be sure and go back and look at that. But many people requested, said, why don't you do one on the three-speed hub of a, of a bike? Well, because I can't find one, but that was on my to-do list. But I, I have to wait and find a, a hub. And I had a what we call an English racer when I was a kid, when I was in eighth, eighth grade, and it was it came from England, it had the three-speed hub, but of course it's long gone, because once a kid gets his driver's license, he can't get rid of those bicycles fast enough, but if anybody knows one or can send me a three-speed hub, I would like to take it apart and do a video. Out of the clear blue sky, Mike Nixon, out of Michigan, now thank you Mike, and I don't believe he's any relation to Richard, at least I hope not. But he sent me this uh, envelope here from Clausing, and of course Clausing is the parent company for Atlas Lays, and this is dated 1974, at least the, the envelope is, and uh, here is the Atlas catalog from that time showing the Atlas Lays, and you can see that that's the exact lathe that was also badged as a craftsman. And it shows their smaller lathes, and all of the different accessories that they had from that era. So that's nice for my library and here is a parts list for the 10 
inch F showing all the parts that's nice as well as another brochure on the Atlas 6 and 12 inch lathes I like that and a price list from 1974 but it probably is no longer applicable or no kidding one other thing I want to show you is that recently here in the winter I designed and made this little dynamo to be driven by my steam engine so watch for a video on that and that's uh, several parts I forgot how many parts building that uh, dynamo to, to light a little LED light now we're gonna go out in the garage and I have a few things to show you out there as well so stand by I interrupt this video for a non sequitur that is something out of sequence that's got nothing to do with anything but I'm showing it anyway and this is a, my vacuum cannon and gather your boys around the little girls too might like this not, not too young uh, teenagers but this is a vacuum cannon a very short uh, piece of PVC inch and a half but you can make it any length I'm showing you the shorter one here because it fits in the frame of the camera but of course you need a vacuum pump to do this and I believe that one for air conditioning would do but I'm using one my old Welch scientific one uh, that I've got here but the whole idea here is that we're going to take this inch and a half PVC and I don't know what schedule it is but I'll tell you one thing it's 40 millimeters inside diameter and that's just total, totally freaky that you ever get something to fit but ping pong balls are 14 millimeter I didn't know that until a week ago but that'll fit in there just nice and we're gonna ram it down and I've got a fitting here and I drilled and tapped and that's whatever size your hose is and you bring the ball right down to that like that now we need to take some mylar or some other material and cover the ends and that's rather difficult to do actually and I tried different materials I tried foil but your average kitchen foil will pop right away your uh, your heavy-duty tooling type foil is way too heavy and it turns out that mylar is just right so I went down to the dollar store and I bought a helium balloon without any helium in it and they don't give you any discount either that lady was rather humorless when I told her I didn't want to pay for the, the gas but anyway it cut some circles out of there and then I, I also take a piece of, this is a fitting, I would press it over there to kind of make it tight like a drum head. And then you've got to use some black tape and, uh, and tape it so that you've got a good seal. And you need to do that to both ends, but of course with the ball in there. So I'm going to do that off camera, but that's what the mylar looks like. And it tends to curl up, it's rather annoying. And I don't know how thick this is, but it is a tough material, but sometimes it does blow on me. Now this is not for children. Uh, you need an adult supervising this. I don't really think it's very dangerous, but you still don't want to get that ball in your face. Because it comes out with considerable velocity. However, it weighs virtually nothing. But the whole idea here is that we're going to form a vacuum in here with a vacuum pump and then I'm gonna pop it and I just use a hatchet or, or a anything to pop it once you've got the full vacuum and then the ball which is sitting here will move with such force as the vacuum uh, as the air rushes in there to fill the vacuum and the ball will come out the other end quite fast and break the membrane on this end and then go to your target or whatever it is you're shooting at. So let me get this set up here with the camera off. Okay I'm loaded for bear hooked up to the vacuum pump and there is a vacuum gauge here and I'm gonna watch that uh, that won't be on camera but I'll bring it down to let's see oh as far as I can about uh, 29 and a half inches of mercury if you know what that is and I know some of you are thinking well yeah this is just something we can do at home everybody has a vacuum pump well alright then I'm just showing it make sure that's in place and I, it doesn't take very long to form that vacuum because this chamber is so small 
already close to it and you can see that getting sucked in did you hear that go off and the ball went clearer across the basement and hit the wall the far wall which of course you can't see but the ball broke this end I broke this end with the chisel hammer so how'd you like that maybe you can try that at home however it takes you another 10 minutes to reload but I did tear that off but you can see the mylar is just the right thickness for that membrane so I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration back to the real thing now I'm out in the garage now and it's only 50 degrees in here although it's, it's a lot warmer than it's been but out of the clear blue sky, a YouTube viewer by the name of Greg up in Plano, Illinois, contacted me and said, Come on up, I got a bunch of steel and uh, aluminum for you. So uh, up I went, and he gave me a couple hundred pounds, and this is aluminum. And they're all relatively short pieces, but that's exactly what I like. So we got some aluminum here and steel, and I've already checked some of it, and it machines quite nicely. And naturally, I don't know exactly what alloy it is, but... Uh, Thank you, Greg. This is going to be uh, extremely useful to me. And there's some big pieces here, too, probably bigger than what I can use. But I already used a piece of two and a half inch that, that was in the batch uh, to make a, a gear for a lathe. It was, as a matter of fact, it was a piece of this. And that machine real nice, both with the milling machine and with the lathe. And then there's some more over here I'm going to show you as well. But, you know, you can't buy this stuff at an Ace Hardware or a building center, so where are you going to get it? So I really appreciate it when somebody comes up out of the blue sky like that for me. Thanks, Greg. And what a beautiful shop Greg had in his garage. You could barely move in there. It was only a single car garage, but he had virtually as much machinery as what I have. And believe it or not, I had uh, a little bit of envy. Uh, there's some aluminum tubing he gave me, and here's some uh, inch and a quarter rod. Those are a little bit longer, about 14 inches longer, long rather. And uh, here's another whole pile of, uh, of steel. And that came from a, a shop up there that does CNC work. And then uh, when they run to, on the end of a bar, often they have pieces that are really uh, too short for them to use, but just right for the rest of us. So also here... Recently, I bought this Ryobi spindle sander, and I tend to use that, you know, I think you all know what this is, for my, uh, my pattern making. I've been wanting one of those for years, and it came with a bunch of the drums. So you'll never see this again in a video, but it sure is something that I'm going to enjoy. And then last but not least, Michael from up in Batavia, Illinois, contacted me again out of the clear blue sky. I never met the man. He said, come on up and uh, look at this machine shop. And it was a machine shop that was being sold out. All the equipment was, uh, was being disposed of. A lot of it was already gone. But uh, for coming up and looking around, both he and his dad gave me this nice six-inch clipper belt lacer. So you'll see me use this in a, another video. And you have seen me lace a belt, but with a much smaller uh, clipper belt lacer that I just held in the vise. And then while I was there, I made this contact with, uh, with Michael to uh, contact another man who bought all of the equipment, and that was several weeks later. And let me move the camera, and you'll see what I got. So I have here yet another lathe, not that I need one, but this is a 9-inch precision Model A uh, South Bend, and you're going to see all about this in another video entitled The Little Lathe That Followed Me Home. So I got this home, I showed how, I, uh, how we loaded it, how I, uh, I got it back here into my shop, and then you're going to see me uh, work on this lathe, and it needs a lot of work, mainly cleaning up, but it has some issues, but it probably would be ready to use right now, but it does have some issues, and I'd like to go through... Uh, these uh, parts, tailstock and carriage and everything, uh, one piece at a time and do some videos if there's any interest in it because they made an awful lot of these Model A lathes and I believe this is probably from, made in the late 40s, probably after the war, but I'm not totally sure and uh, 
perhaps someone can dig up the information for me, but uh, you're going to see a lot more of the little lathe that followed me home. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this issue of, of this and that. Be sure and watch my 650 other videos, and this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video.